Section 4.6, last section in Chapter 4. Um, when you do take Calc 2 and you've gone into Chapter 5, you'll learn much more um, in terms of integration techniques. Um, but this is the last integration technique that we're going to work on in Calc 1. This is called integration by substitution. All right, so I need to develop why in the world this is happening first, because you haven't seen a need for this yet on purpose, because you've only been shown the ones you could deal with up to now, right? And so this is going to actually develop why this is happening a little bit in terms of derivatives. So derivatives, I want you to consider the function sine of x cubed minus 4x. And I want you to write down its derivative. So jot that in that blank right there real quick. All right, somebody tell me what you have. I'll start it out. You've got y prime. What's next? Does everybody have that? What was the overarching rule you used? The chain rule. Okay, the chain rule, which is what caused sort of the weirdness of that second fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part of that fundamental theorem of calculus, is exactly what's causing this particular section to be in existence as well. It's all about the chain rule. Okay? So if we were going to go in reverse, that is, if we started with this weird cosine of x cubed minus 4x times 3x squared minus 4. What difficulties, right, like if you didn't know this is where it came from, what difficulties would there be based on the calculus integration techniques so far that you have seen? What about doing this and finding its antiderivative makes it hard? It's what? There's multiplication. It's a product, right? We haven't had that happen yet. I have two things multiplied together, and that causes difficulty. So the basic difficulty is there's multiplication or there's a product. That's the kicker. So with few exceptions, and there are a couple, and when we see them, I'll make sure and mention so you can see what I mean. Almost everything in this section is going to look like products. Okay? All right. So let's actually see how it works going forward now. One option that we're presented with when finding an antiderivative that looks like a product is to decide if there is a composite function present. So from algebra, composite means simply one function inside of another one, like the chain rule, right? Where there's an inside something going on and an outside something going on. Chain rule stuff. And if the derivative from one piece of that is present in the other piece. Okay? So let me show you how that works. If you consider the y prime that you have above, the x cubed minus 4x, that part's inside of the cosine, right? We would call that the inside function, and its derivative, namely the 3x squared minus 4, is in fact the value that's product, that's been product, that's been multiplied with on the outside, right? The outside piece, that other piece, is the derivative of the piece that's inside. As such, what we can do is we can let u equal the inside function, which was the x cubed minus 4x. And then if we take the derivative, and I'm going to use the notation like this, du dx, and I'll show you why. If we take the derivative of u, we would get 3x squared minus 4, right? Now I want to take this and I'm going to rewrite it. 
So it's going to say du equals 3x squared minus 4 dx. I'm just multiplying the dx to the other side. Okay, everybody good so far? Really just a lot of algebraic manipulation there. Not even a lot, a little algebraic manipulation there. Thus, when you have the integral of the cosine of x cubed minus 4x times 3x squared minus 4 dx. What you're doing is you're identifying the pieces from here that can be substituted down here. In particular, right here in the middle, what's another name for x cubed minus 4x? U. So instead of writing x cubed minus 4x, I'm going to write cosine of u. And what's another name for 3x squared minus 4 dx? du. So I'm going to replace that with du. And I don't know about you, but the integral of cosine of u du is a whole heck of a lot cleaner looking than the other one I had. So, what is the integral of cosine of u? Um, it was, it went away because it was part of all of this. It was part of the substitution. Yes. What's the integral of cosine of u du? Sine, positive, right? Sine of u. plus c, we're back to that again, because we don't have limits on top and bottom, we don't have the end points, right? And the last thing we're going to do is we need to evaluate that at what u equals. u is actually equal to x cubed minus 4x, which means that if the, an if the question starts out in x, the answer needs to be in x when I'm done. So this would then be the sign of x cubed minus 4x plus c. We're going to do one example and then we're going to stop, okay? This one feels a little weird because it's like, well, I knew I was going to get that. That's where I started the whole problem, right? But that's kind of my point is that I wanted you to see that, that we do in fact get back to where we started. So let's see one where we don't know where we started, so to speak. If I'm looking at this, do I see a product? Yes, definitely a product. What piece of this looks like it's inside of something else? The 3 minus 4x squared. So we're going to write down u equals 3 minus 4x squared. Okay, that's part of it. You have to write this substitution down. And then you're going to take the derivative of it, and you're going to write it as du equals. So what's the derivative of 3 minus 4x squared? Negative 8x. And then we write the dx next to that. Okay, almost like when we were doing like implicit differentiation or something like that. We had some of that going on back then. Now we're ready to make substitutions. So going back over here still have the antiderivative notation, I still have the cube root, but what's underneath my radical now? U. Right? All of this is U. And what about out here? All of that's DU. Now, I don't particularly like the notation for that, so I'm going to rewrite it as U to the one-third. What's the antiderivative of u to the one-third? Okay, so we're going to add one to it so we get u to the four-thirds. Dividing by four-thirds is the same as multiplying by three-fourths. I need a plus c, and then I'm going to evaluate this at u equal three minus four x squared. So I have three-fourths times 3 minus 4x 
squared to the four thirds plus C. There's only one more thing that you would do. The original problem started out with a cube root in it, right? So the answer has that same notation. We're trying to make our answers match the same format that we originally start with. So this will be 3 fourths cube root of the 3 minus 4x to the fourth plus c. Yes, Steiner. Oh, I left my squirt off. I'm sorry. Is that better? I think so. It just got left off. Any other questions? All right.